Good morning guys, uh, this is going to be probably in my opinion the best man cave haul video on the internet or anywhere. I had one hell of a buy-in weekend. Uh, before I get started and show you this um, amazing man cave haul, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I buy from car boot sales, I bring it back, clean it up, sell some in my shop, sell some on eBay to make a living. That's what I do and then I film what I've bought to show you. Some videos I try and help you by out telling you how to identify stuff, but all in all, you get to see what I buy, see what's selling, see what sort of money it's worth, and that. Anyway, moving on, one of my uh, one of my um, subscribers suggested to me this week that I create a man cave section in my shop, which I've done. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you that. And at the end of the video too, I'm also going to photograph every single piece in today's video so you can have a close-up look. Because I tell you what, some of this stuff is so weird, it is unbelievable. It's going to be quite a long video, but I tell you what, you don't want to miss it and I'm going to save the best for last. <laughs> Let me show you just how wacky some of this stuff is going to be, okay? This is my first piece and I absolutely love, well I love every single piece in today's video, but have a look at this. I know. You're thinking, what the hell is that? I know. Right, to tell you exactly what it is. You got an old meat grinder, so a mincer. So you'd make your sausages, you'd put in your meat in here, you'd turn the handle, and out would come all your mince meat. This gentleman handmade these, he built the frame, mounted it all onto a frame, permanently fixed it onto the frame. Then he's welded all these tools, and these are actual tools. This here is a working adjustable spanner. You've got a drill bit, you've got a socket set, spanners, everything. He's welded them all in, welded them together. So basically, it represents, I don't want the tools no more. I'm going to put them through the mincer, grind them up, and he's welded all this chain coming out the end to represent the mincemeat. So the tools represent the sausage, the chain represents the mincemeat. Look at that! <coughs> Do you know what? If you've got a man cave and you want funky, you want unusual, and you want absolutely and bonkers and amazing, that's your thing. Cost me a tenner. I see that at about £65 all day long. £55, £65, no problem at all. <laughs> and do you know what? I take my hat off to this gentleman who's been doing this. He had a full table of homemade stuff that he's done. And I tell you what, I think I'm going to be a regular customer of his. That, the hours involved in making that, plus the materials, you know, if you've sold each one individually at two or three quid each, and the bit of chain and the mincer, is more than what I paid for the entire thing, but I think he just loves creating the art. I'm going to do photographs of them at the end, but I tell you what, the old video is full of absolutely knockout stuff. That is quite spectacular. I've got a few sculptures to show you but I'm going to mix them in amongst other things okay going for a bit more standard but still love it bear with me I'm coming back I had a selection of lighters so we got advertising lighters so you first of all you got martini the ad can company London now I got four Five, sorry, and I paid seven pounds for five lighters. Coleman's mustard. They're all the ad can company. Guinness extra stout. Is there a date on them? Well, the label is designed by permission of Arthur Guinness and Son Co. Park Ro Royal Limited. So it's an official lighter. They haven't just copied them. Then I had a nice little fire extinguisher lighter, which isn't as nice as the advertising ones, but I still thought it was a quirky little thing, so I put it in with a pile. And then I had a proper Zippo, Zippo lighter for Jack Daniels. It's been engraved for Dad, and then Jack Daniels on it. Never been out of his packet. Seven pound for that little group, guys. It's probably worth in the range of about forty to fifty pounds for the group. Um, when I individually price them up, that is an absolute crack, and to be honest with you, they're going to look amazing um, on display. If you like advertising and things like that, they are right up your street. Let me show you another one of the sculptures now. 
and this is a bit of a beast I know it's an axe so this is the head of the axe the handle and then just the decoration now what he'd done this used to be like um, a saw blade and he's cut it all into shape he's welded his chain together and rigid welded the end this was a disc cutter blade apparently or another saw blade if you like and then he's got a piece of steel that you use in foundations and that look at that doesn't it look quite mean <laughs> you know you could take that bit off and you've got a really nasty weapon but uh, la that will display gorgeously I paid a fiver for that one and well what can I say I see that gotta be about 35 40 pound all day long so already we're up over 100 pound in my opinion for the two pieces here that I bought off him for 15 pounds I genuinely think is work is undervalued um what next right the next one i'm going to show you is not everybody's cup of tea um certainly some of the ladies out there are not going to like this but this is a man cave video i have got four original hogarth engravings now they could be slightly later than his first edition ones uh, but they're not prints, these are proper engravings. And basically, they're the four stages of cruelty. Yeah, be warned if, you're, if you don't like gruesome, skip this little part. They're pretty nasty. So we're going to start on this one. So, if you look here, I don't know if they're doing an autopsy dead or alive. I I'm assuming he's dead. But they've put a bolt through his head here to hang him from the ceiling. You got someone digging his eye out there. You got another surgeon here ripping all his intestines out, and someone down here putting them in a bucket while the dog's trying to eat them. Pretty, pretty gruesome. And you got a bucket over here with all skulls and bones, and people being boiled alive to clean their bones, take the meat off the bones. It's a pretty nasty, gruesome image. Next one here. You've got, well, you got the, um, I don't know what you'd call him, coachman, beating the horse here with a big wooden mallet. Um, you've got someone down here, I don't know what he's doing to this sheep or lamb, whatever, killing it. You've got somebody over here who's gone under the wheel of the cart, and somebody here is trying to lift the cart off him. Um, up the back here, you've got a bull chasing people with someone up in the air. Some really, really nasty images here. This one here is pretty, uh, if you're an animal lover, look away. Um, well, here you can see them. He's holding the dog here and he's ramming the poker or an arrow up the dog's backside. Over here they're hanging some cats. Here he's lined up, he's about to shoot the chicken. I don't know what he's doing, but he's chopping the dog's leg off, I think. Oh, he's doing something to the dog. So all in all, that's a pretty uh, nasty one again. What are they doing up there? I know they're torturing a bird or something up there. <coughs> so again, another really, really um, gruesome image. Final one of the four. I don't know what this one is. I think you've just witnessed a murder scene. I think this gentleman here has just murdered a lady. So I think that's, um, you know... An early Victorian murder scene. You know, they've all caught in, they got pitchforks and everything, and you've got the lady on the floor dead. So, anyway, I paid a fiver each for these engravings. Now, if they were prints, when you look under an eyeglass, the way to tell a print from an engraving is you'll have hundreds and hundreds of little dots with the engraving you won't, it's just a solid colour. And these are original engravings. On the back, they've all got the info. Now, they might, as I said, they might not be the first edition of the engravings, but they're certainly engravings, they're not prints. 20 quid for the four, so it's a fiver each. I see them at about 80 pounds for the four. And I know they're not a woman thing, but I tell you what, 
There's plenty of men out there with hang them in their man cave or an office and look at them and smile as just the macabre humour of it all. And yeah. Anyway, I got loads more absolutely amazing and bonkers stuff to show you, so don't go away. Right, next piece I want to show you is my final sculpture of this gentleman today. Now, everything I'm showing you today come from Gethly Gay Car Boot Cell. Um, so just for you to know, it all come in Gethly Gay. Well, say it all, it might be one or two who didn't. I know, it's a lamp. And it works. Let me plug it in. Obviously, I'd have to have it pat tested, I think. So we've got a working lamp. It weighs a ton. Now, let me explain to you what we got. It's heavy, mind. So, this space is a big, heavy clutch from a car. Um, I don't know whether it's the clutch housing, the push plate, or what, I'm not sure, but it's part of the clutch of a car. Then you've obviously got the rigid chain again that he put into his shape. And then this used to be an old trophy cup. So he's made it into the lamp housing. Now we've sprayed it all black and silver. And underneath he's put some velvet lining to keep from scratching anything. He charged me a tenner again. So £25 for the three pieces guys. That's all I've paid. Isn't it spectacular? I see that on a man's desk. Looking amazing. I tell you what it weighs a ton. And it's got to be another 60, 70 quid, haven't it? What a decorative lamp. Now, I don't know. There may be people out there doing this type of stuff all over the place. But I tell you what, around here, it's the first time I've seen it. And I think the creativity and the imagination he's done is nothing short of um, absolutely amazing. He made a garden um, seesaw for children out of a hub of a wheel. It was, some of the stuff he had was bonkers. His imagination was wonderful. And those three pieces there, they're going in the window of the shop to let people know I've got a man cave. <clears throat> I've got one last piece to show you in the bag of the toys and things if you like, but that's for the end. Are you a VW fan? Now I think this one is a repo. However, it's made of tin and it's got the steering wheel inside and all the wheels move and everything. So it's a quality example. I don't think it's original. I do think it's a reproduction. I paid eight pound for it and I see it about 20, 25 pound. It is still a really, really nice car. It's got a little bit of age. It's not a brand new repo, but I don't think it's an older one. However, for eight pound, you know, if you're a VW collector, that's going to look lovely on your shelf, just as decoration. 25 quid, got to be on me. Even if I sold it for 20 quid, you know, that's over doubling up on my money. It's still a nice item and it's saleable. But today I'm specialising or concentrating purely on the man cave. Right. So if I take that out of there. Are you ready to have a look at this? In fact, if I use the box, you might be able to see it better. Look at that. Solid silver lion head ring. Beautifully made. Fully hallmarked. Now, I paid a bit of money for this one. I paid 20 quid for it, and I absolutely adore it. And I see it at about 45 maybe 50 pound 45 pound give or take so it's a double up but it's a nice ring and i don't have any in the shop at the moment so over in the cabinet it's gonna look spectacular and i want when people come in the men come in i've i've concentrated up to now on pretties porcelains and jewelry for ladies i want a section i'm missing out on the men coming in and going oh god i want that and concentrating in today's video just on that that's lush Absolutely stunning. A couple of more normal things. We have a micrometer. In this box, 
it's not a more right or anything because uh, I know some of the top are better makes more and right than that. They do okay, but you got that one there, and then we have this micrometer here. This one's got a name on it. I can't can't read it. I can't read it, but the name is part of a like a spanner. It makes up a spanner. But either way, I paid. Um, I think it was eight pound for the two, or ten pound for the two. I think it was eight pound for the two pieces. If they go out ten or fifteen quid each, they're there for a man. They're not very old, but they're quality tools for a man, and tools sell. Next piece is really interesting. Now, on the surface, it looks like nothing. Maybe a crutch or something that was under somebody's arm means nothing. Then you turn it around and it's got this little badge on it. I'm going to improve the lighting in the shop here, guys, okay? Just bear with me. I will get it done in, as soon as I can. The badge reads, Sir Geoffrey, British, 1941, East India, Hill Pig, Smythe. Now, I haven't done no research yet. But it sounds military, and to be honest with you, this looks like a crutch. It's been cut down now to be used as a walking cane. But I honestly think that was a crutch. But it also comes apart. It's a folding one. So you can unscrew it and take it into two parts. But the money in this one will be in the research. I paid a fiver for this. But 1941. So, you know... I think this is somebody was injured and this was a crutch and somebody brought it on and turned it into a walking stick. Now, as I've said, the money is in the badge. I paid a fiver. I don't know the value until I know how important this badge is. Now, if he was an officer who was injured and in something important, this could be worth decent money. If he's just a nobody, then you're talking 10, 20 pounds. But this could have potential of being 50, 60 pounds, you don't know. That gives this history and character. And you know what? Somebody's put this rubber end on. It doesn't mean nothing. I can take that off. That's got a bit of character. And um, with the history, you know, if you could find research the history on this gentleman, you could do a little, hang that up and do a little description of the side of it to say exactly what it was, what battle he was in, and so forth. Um, and there's a lot of people collect sticks out there. So that's another interesting one. Okay, I got one more uh, item left to show you in uh, the video today. Don't forget, I'm going to film the little section I've done in the shop for a man cave to show you what I've done there. Um, just basically putting man related items then, if you like, in the cabinet. Um, and I'm going to also include close-up photographs of these items from today's video because I think they are just cool as hell but have a look at this this is wow I know what you're probably thinking it's just a bike but it's not Now I think, or I believe, this is a salesman sample of an old butcher's bike. All these bars, everything is solid brass. And it's been painted green, obviously. The chain and wheels work. It's all working mechanism. Proper old rubber on the tires. Really nice. The seat is coming loose. It needs another screw on there. But the seat, even the seat, look at that. It's been beautifully carved. It's got his little stand on the side to stand him up. And just pull that down to stand him up. Now, I bought this one off a fellow dealer or a friend of mine. Basically, they bought it last week in Gatley Gay for £4. And I was devastated. I was gutted, to be totally honest with you. I think this is absolutely beautiful. 
as the detail on there as detailed as gold this is quite spectacular to be honest with you and as I've already said this is all brass um, there's a few areas where it's rubbed and you can see brass through it some of it where I can't see might be iron but there's a lot of brass on there now they paid four pound for it knowing that I still paid 30 I give them 30 pound I give them a profit I didn't care I absolutely love it small but beautiful guys honest to god I'm working look at that look at the quality even the drums this is a really really nice quality piece now I think in my opinion it's a salesman sample would have been a small sample to take around show people this is what I'm selling are you interested in the full size version that's what I believe this is and if I'm right the value is somewhere up around 100 150 pounds if I'm wrong and it is a repo which I'm doubting very much um, then it's probably worth 30 to 50 pound which is around what I paid for it now the friends I bought it off they're not antique dealers they go around car boot sales they pick up things they like the look of they put a few pound on them and they sell them back on on a market so they dealers but they don't specialize in antiques and collectibles they go for what they like whether it's a brand new purse whether it's an old sample bike or whatever so it's not like they've gone yes we bought it now nah, it's, it's no good so we'll sell it on to him their friends uh, I know exactly what he done with it he took it home put it on his shelf and done nothing with it for a week then sold it to me spectacular yeah. oh god I love it do you know I'm going to struggle to sell this one I really am going to struggle to sell it I absolutely adore it and that is the ultimate man here for me so between this bike and the mincer they are, and the lamp the lamp the mincer and the bike and the pick well, and the pictures and the ring to be honest with you there's no nothing really i don't like in today's video guys honest to god the stuff is well the reason it's called man cave stuff is because it's for a man and it's right up my street i can't explain to you how excited i am about the pieces that i just absolutely i could keep and live with every single one of them Anyway, I'm going to go and take you over now and I'm going to show you the cabinet area and then don't forget, stay tuned and you'll get all the close-up photographs of the, um, the items in today's video. I really hope you've enjoyed, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, so I got myself a little uh, wooden sign here from Amazon, Welcome to the Man Cave. And I'm slowly but surely turning this into a Man Cave area. You've got all the lead soldiers. I can't believe they haven't sold, to be honest with you. But hey-ho, moving on. Um, I'm looking for desk items, toys, things that appeal to men. You know? This one here, you know, I've got military, Winston Churchill's dog, some medals, a cannon. Well, you can see yourself. It's just a really nice mix of things for men. Slowly but surely, I'm changing it all around here. You got the World War One shells down there, and another World War Two shell over there. A golfing um, doorstop. Now we come over here, and we got like an aeroplane and an inkwell and a auctioneer's gavel I haven't changed it all yet some still jewellery and I'm still working on it um, you know a bit more World War One stuff a nice hip flask a bit of scientific at the back on top I'm trying to change it around we've got some nice big barrels and tankards a brandy warmer slowly but surely I'm trying to turn this whole area into a man cave and I think there's still some pretties in it, but I only started it last week. So I will get through it, and this will be a curio corner for men. The old John Wayne there in the back. 
that's it uh, guys I suppose for today's video <sighs> photos are about to follow so don't go without having a really good look at these photos guys honestly some of them stuff uh, I can't do them justice did I lie to you? I told you this is going to be one of the most bonkers, wonderful man cave haul videos on the internet. And I tell you what, <laughs> one of my favourite pots. <laughs> I really, really rate it. And if you don't sell it, come home with me. I just love how bonkers it is. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, I would really, really appreciate um, a share and a like. You know, if you've got a, a friend who's a man and you think would love this stuff, tag him in it. Because honestly, it's a bonkers, bonkers film. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.